Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Expeditions, the newest one from Stonemaier with solo and competitive play. And disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. This game's been marketed as the sequel to Scythe, and certainly the art is very similar, but how's the game play and how does the game stand up in solo? Let's find out and get to the list. <laughs> So from a number five point, I'm going to start with a mix for my taste. And this one is very much for my taste, and that's the variety in the game. You get a random mech at the beginning of each game, which has a, a different ability that's going to push you toward some sort of strategy. Similarly, the combo of your starting character and companion gives you better access to certain types of workers or certain types of cards, which again will push you a given way. And then the combos of the cards you get, which I'll be talking about later, will also make some strategies stronger than others, make you uh, lean into some type of points. But because in the end, to uh, end the game and really get the highest score, you need to splash into a lot of different things, it can feel like each play tends to hit somewhat similar beats. So still, this is uh, better than most Euros, and if you don't mind this in Euros in general, this is probably going to be a full pro for you. But for me, uh, just a mix to start out. I have another sort of mix leaning pro for my fourth point, uh, at least for my taste, and this is in how you uh, tuck cards under your board to uh, get toward the stars at the end of the game and also to get some extra like ongoing bonuses. You're going to complete quests and tuck them in the top. You're going to upgrade items, tuck them to the right. You're going to uh, meld these meteorites, tuck them in the bottom. And to quickly get the negative out of the way, because it's not a really big one, but it does feel like a little bit fiddly and hard to remember how the different three types of cards work and how they each kind of uh, get added in different ways. But on the positive side, the differences do change up the variety <laughs> to kind of counter my fifth point a second ago. And also, it is a really cool choice of when you want to keep cards in your hand and when you want to place them under your boards, because they are no longer under your control anymore. You can't play them. And generally, playing them is stronger than just having them under your board, despite like the ongoing bonuses. So there's some cool stuff going on. There's some nice variety. But again, it might make the game a little bit harder to teach. But let's get to some uh, full pros. My number three is one for my taste, and that's the action system. So what you do on your turn is uh, you start the game in the refresh spot, and you're going to move the cube one space, and then you get to activate all the actions that are uncovered. So after you refresh, you do all three, and then you get to like kind of play around in this top rectangle. So this turn, I move and gather. The next turn, I play and gather. And first of all, this is a simple choice, but a pretty engaging one, because like you're moving between these tiles, trying to leverage the abilities on them in the best way possible. But then what really pushes this higher, in my estimation, is the refresh action. So a lot of euros will have something that will kind of like pull your workers back or unlock your things again. This is no different. But here's a really cool thing. Usually in these kind of games, when you like pull your stuff back, it's in a completely wasted turn. And that seems to be the case here as well. But because the turn after you refresh, you get all three actions instead of two actions, basically like one and a half of a turn. It's like you only lose a single action in refreshing. You only lose a slight momentum boost in your step. And I really love that. I I think it uh, makes the negative feeling that you often get in Euros when you have to like kind of take the rest turn. It really gets rid of it entirely. Next for my number two, also a full pro for my taste, is the Automa in the game, the AI you can play for solo. So first of all, they've got five different difficulty levels, and it does a nice job of changing up the pacing of the game, like pushing you to go faster, giving them slightly more victory points. And then the actual Automa turn is a nice mix of cutting out a ton of stuff, so you're not like running an entire AI or anything, but also keeping their turns impactful for the player. So they level up their stars, and as they unlock more stars, they get to take more actions on their turn. So it kind of uh, models the sort of deck building and combos that you're building. They're getting more powerful too. They can clear away cards on the board to change up your options and kind of keep things moving so you can't just uh, count on a card being there. But resolving their stuff takes like literally seconds. It is a very smooth Automa that uh, keeps all of the interesting play interactions because there are some pretty good ones here uh, that scores in a reliable way uh, that really matches whatever difficulty setting you pick. And then finally, for my number one point, which is also a pro for my taste. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot, especially for a Euro. <laughs> and that is the card play and the card combo. So first of all, it's got this very cool spatial element, which reminds me of uh, what's the one we previewed? The uh, oh, Union City Alliance, which was a deck builder where you're like actually getting cards based on where you are on the board. And this has a similar thing because you're, you're kind of deck building here. You know, it's, it's like sort of tableau builder uh, sort of deck building. You're getting these cards and often it's based on like where they are on the board and which ones you can grab. 
And there are so many interesting combos in them, which, you know, again, does go against a bit the uh, the mix I had for my number five, because like in a game where you really go heavy on items, that's going to feel different than a game where you really go heavy on quests. That's going to feel different from a game where you go for a lot of meteorites. That's going to feel different from a game where you are fighting these uh, corruption tokens a whole lot. And, you know, I will say the one negative is that especially in a competitive game, when you're like trying to look at these cards on the board with their little tiny text, that could be a challenge. Uh, not a complaint for Solo, though, because then you have them right in your face and you can take as long as you want to read them. But putting that one niggle aside, I really love how these cards combo together. I love, again, how it has the feeling of a Tableau Builder, like a Terraforming Mars combined with a Deck Builder. How, again, like the choice of when you uh, meld or upgrade your cards out of your hand, when to play them with the action system. It all comes together, I just think, brilliantly. So a uh, really awesome job on this aspect of the game. So overall, you might want to look into this game if you like light to midweight euros with a strong card play and card combos, sort of a tableau builder feel. And I think you'll especially enjoy the solo mode if you like simplified automa instead of beat your own score or something that like fully models another player. But on the other hand, you might want to avoid this one if you want super heavy euros, if you want like a giant feeling of building an empire, or if you want tons of variety in factions and scenarios and that kind of stuff, the game plays somewhat similarly each time. And finally, to address the Scythe comparison, I don't think this game is almost anything like Scythe beside the uh, Victory Stars. <laughs> I really think it plays completely differently. If you like Scythe, you might not like this one. If you don't like Scythe, you might like this one. I don't think uh, any experience with that game is going to help much here. And if you'd like to see the game in action, I had a playthrough a few weeks ago you can check out. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.